All right, today is the day, and we are out here with Leviathan. Um, I'm leaning up against the cabin subframe, which is now permanently, well, permanently is a little bit harsh. It is a mounted on a three-point system that is has the ability to be detached, if you ever want to do that. We can take a look at that uh, final attachment onto the chassis. That three-point system is made so that the chassis can flex in when it's in off-road terrain, without the cabin itself having to be involved in that flexing. Anyway, that's what we're going to look at today is getting those things installed, that chassis being attached, because we have been working on that for quite a few weeks, because we have another thing coming up real soon, and that is that the cab for Leviathan has come back from KCI and the assembly there. I'm going to give you a sneak preview of that, but we will get back to the cabin in another video. Anyway, let's jump in and take a look today. Now, before we could put the chassis and the subframe together, I had to finish the tanks. And the last thing to finish them off was to actually just add a couple of heating pads for some cold weather camping. And these heating pads just stick adhesively to the tanks and then insulate them with a little rock wool so that they won't um, melt the foam that's going to be above them. And speaking of the foam that's going to be above them, we're just talking two inch styrene foam that's going to be inserted between all the frame rails of the deck of that subframe. Just cut that into shape. Nice tight fits between them. Now this is about an R8 to R10 insulation. Going to be a lot less than that because aluminum conducts. So all these frame rails between the insulation is going to be a little bit of a detriment, but we'll get as much insulation as we can anyway. And once we get that insulation in between the two main frame rails, that's all that's important right now because we are going to be sealing that up by sticking the tanks or the trays that hold the water tanks between those frame rails. Now there is going to be a problem with the weight of the water in there, so we're going to add a little more support. And that's going to be done by inserting these uh, threaded rod inserts into the center frame rail and then attaching it from the backside with another uh, tapered bolt. And in the end, a threaded rod will be inserted into these and go through the tanks. And I'll show you that in a moment. But I said this uh, threaded coupling goes through that center frame rail of the deck. And then on the other side, I'm going to drill a tapered hole because I need to have a tapered nut in there or a tapered bolt, I should say, because that is the floor of the walking area. So we need to get everything flush and flat so that there won't be a trip hazard. A little red Loctite because this is a permanent installation. Threading this in, and it is uh, threading into that uh, threaded rod coupling on the other side. And then we're going to slip the tanks in, and they're made, of course, with a notch that fits over the main frame rails. And we're going to push those into place. This is the gray water tanks in the back. You can see that the fresh water has already been installed. Using a clamp to just kind of hold it in place while I get the bolts to attach it. Now the trays were made just water jet cut and I had all the holes pre cut by the water jet, but I have to finish that hole into the frame rail and then um, some self tapping bolts that will go into there. And these trays, uh, once they're all installed, then we're going to be able to lift this whole thing up because the, basically the subframe is complete. Get those self tapping nuts in there. I said along the sides, all these nuts on each side. But I mentioned there is a problem with the, especially the fresh water. We have two tanks. It's going to be 400, 450 pounds of water when they're full. And so that's a lot of weight to be bouncing on just this eighth inch metal. So we are going to make center supports going through here. Now, if you remember, there are tanks on both sides with a about a four inch gap between them. So I'm drilling these holes and pushing this rod through the insulation that's in there and then finding that threaded coupling that we've fastened to the bottom of the floor. Couldn't quite get it turned into there. So I put a little extension on there and then I'm able to find it. Get that thing threaded in there. Then we'll take and put a, a little, a larger washer to spread the weight out and a nut, put some red Loctite on there as well just to make sure these things don't pop off. Um, all because they're going to be way underneath in this chassis, a little bit more difficult to get to. So we're getting all this work done so that we have access now. Once it sits on the chassis, there's just a few inches of clearance in some of these areas. 
And this is just gonna occur on both sides of the tank, about 16 inches apart, going up and down. I reduced the size of the gray water tank and it is only about 26 inches from front to back. So it does not have the center brace. I do have threaded rods in front of it and back of it. If I do have any problems, I can just run a strap underneath the tank for the center support. Again, run those threaded rods in and we'll put a washer to spread the weight out. Tighten those nuts up just where we get some pressure onto that sheet metal. And these tanks are very secure now with uh, multiple bolts along the side rails, braces through the center. And this thing's all ready to lay down flat, pick this whole subframe up and get the chassis underneath it. Now I don't have any kind of a crane or anything to pick this thing up, but it did weigh about 600 pounds before the water trays, another 120 pounds, I suppose. So what we did is just use some high lift jacks to bring that subframe up into the air and then use the big wooden beam to hold it up in the front so that we have room to get the chassis roll underneath there. Now this was uh, quite a bit of a challenge because even the high lift jacks took it up to a height where it was still getting kind of precarious. And uh, in fact, I ended up taking these large tires off and putting the old 26 inch truck tires on and having to take off one of the three-point mounting, the cross brace, the tube cross brace on the three-point mount, just to get to slide underneath those water tanks. And of course, there's still some things that it was uh, running into back there, but we just wanna make sure we didn't hit something and knock this whole thing over as it's precariously set up there. So this is just a matter of working the, the chassis in, getting underneath. Again, run into some kind of problem. I think we've got clear and now we roll this baby back into position right about there. Now it's a matter of lining things up perfectly and uh, setting it down. But I mentioned I had to take off one of the three point mount that cross brace. So we're going to go ahead now and uh, get that inserted back in. It goes right between the two sets of tanks. And it'll get bolted back into position. And you can see now the three-point mount bracket that's hooked to the subframe will drop down onto that round tube. So we're still a few inches off, but now that we've got the bar in place, throw a little grease on top of each one and lower the subframe down into position. Now this brace crosses over and has bolts on each side of that tube little bracket that goes underneath there. We'll do the same, put some grease into it, and then uh, attach it to the top bracket with some three quarter inch uh, grade eight bolts, which should hold us about 90,000 pounds. So should be plenty to hold it to this uh, cross piece. Always a little Loctite just to make sure this is a pretty permanent assembly. We don't want anything to vibrate loose because there's going to be um, more tanks and equipment on the outside that's going to block all this stuff off so we don't have access as well. So now it's moving on to the front three-point mount. And uh, trying to be so accurate as to be able to line this thing up with all three points would be kind of difficult. So what I did is I left all the brackets that actually attached to the chassis off and put the pin in that holds it there temporarily and then uh, put all my gussets together, weld it all up, weld it to that L bracket that sits on top of the chassis itself. And the final part of this weld is a, uh, a bracket on the outside that's going to lap over so we don't have all butt welds, but we have one good lap weld so for that thing to break loose, going to have to tear off of a quarter inch piece of steel plate. And with that thing all welded up, give it a little cleanup, a little, take the grinder to it, knock off all the weld spatter and make all of the edges nice and round. And we will drill the chassis itself now that we know everything is perfectly in place. 
with our drill holes, get some chassis black paint and really seal that thing up, get it into all the holes and cracks. And then we'll go, of course, go ahead and insert our bolts, get the thing attached permanently to the chassis. And this, of course, was just repeated on the other side. Now in this front three point bracket, there's also going to be another place where it attaches to the cross member for the transmission. And this little plate I'm setting down in there with a piece of one and a half inch square tubing that's going to fit inside of our, uh, our little arch bracket there. I just try it in position, reaching in there and tack welding it. And then I'll pull it out and finish welding it up. In the end, it will be bolted in place and add another support point that will put the weight down, not only on the chassis, but onto the cross member for the transmission. And I'll kind of show you here in, a, in the video what I'm talking about, but this uh, bar goes in between the two plates of the that arched bracket. And then it goes down, it sits on, like I said, spreads the weight out onto that other cross member besides just the rails of the chassis as well itself. Now to keep this whole thing together and have a pivot point, there is a large stainless steel pin that's gonna be held together with this uh, little quarter 20 grade eight bolt. And I have drilled it out so that I can attach it with some aircraft tie wire. So the big stainless steel bolt will slide in and then the little quarter 20 bolt will go through it on the opposite side, line up the holes we've drilled and put a little aircraft tie wire in there. We want to make sure that that nut cannot come undone, cannot loosen up, and that the bolt doesn't slide back and forth. We just want to keep it securely fastened. And this point, mounting point, like this one and the rear one, of course, are all supported by this one and a half inch stainless steel pin, which allows the whole chassis to rock sideways with the front and the back mount, and of course, forward and back on the center mount. There's the front and there's the back built just about the same way as you just saw me working on that front mount. When we built this lean-to, it was just to barely fit Leviathan in it because I can't go much higher with the eaves of my roof, but it does fit under there with just inches to spare. And here is the cab. It has arrived. I am working on some things, going to be building the dashboard and some other ductwork and other structure inside the cab. Routing plumbing for air and power, hydraulics for brakes, things like that, before we lift it up and set it down on that far end of the chassis.